Hi everyone, it's Lauren Vines here again with part three of the five part series of Strengthening Families. Last week we talked about how, um, how to deal with stress, how do we handle stress for both the parents and your child. And so today we're gonna to talk about verbal and physical redirection as well as problem solving and negotiating and compromising as I've alluded to in the first two videos. So here we go. Okay, so the first one I would like to talk about is family rules. So I keep emphasizing create family rules, have that family time. And so these are the things that you're gonna need um, to develop and collaborate on effective family rules. Um, and so you're gonna need a poster board, some markers, and even some tape. And the process for this is to have the family sit down as a whole and develop family rules that everyone is accountable for. So that includes allowing the child to develop some of the rules only because that gives them responsibility and accountability to follow those rules. And so I think this is a great way to have the child decorate it, have them color it, hang it in their room, um, that everyone knows the expectation of the quote unquote family rules um, and also discuss consequences for each if these rules aren't followed by it. And that's part of the negotiation and compromising aspect to effective parenting is to make sure that child has a say so um, in the family component and feel like as they're being heard. Okay, so verbal and physical redirection. So redirection is used to help children learn appropriate behavior, uh, prevent injury, promote safe exploration, and prevent the constant threat of punishment. So verbal redirection is redirects a, child be, a child's behavior by stating what not to do, followed by what to do instead. So for example, no standing in the tub, sit please. See how they, they told them not what not to do and then followed it by what they can do. Another example is don't play with the scissors. You could get hurt. Here's a toy to play with instead. So I need to mention that threats are, are not appropriate ways to use verbal redirection. So an example of a threat would be, Billy, if you don't get your coat on right now, you'll get the spanking of your lifetime. The correct way to do this is, Billy, in 10 minutes, we are leaving to go to grandma's. I expect that you'll be ready to go. Thanks for cooperating. You always wanna emphasize thank you and appreciation when you're redirecting a child, um, only because that gives them a little bit of power in the situation and they, they know that they're doing something right. So physical direct redirection is it redirects children from dangerous situations such as electric sockets, climbing up and down stairs, putting things in their mouth, um, and just some of the ways that children can be injured in general. And so a perfect physical redirection is, oh, that's an owie, come on, let's play with your toys instead of playing with the electrical socket. Um, and that could be more effective for the little ones, especially babies, um, but you always wanna have the physical and verbal redirection what not to do, what they can do instead, because it works best when they're used together. So in previous parenting series, I have discussed problem solving and decision making. So problem solving is what to do when you have a problem but don't know what the solution is. Decision making is what you do when you know some possible solutions to that identified problem. So solving problems can be something that we do by ourselves or something we do as a family. To reach a point of action in solving problems, both personal and familiar, certain steps need to be followed. So these are the steps. So step one is identify the problem and write it down. Work only on one problem at a time, and that's important so there's no confusion, and there's no lapse of attention, identify and work on one at a time. Step two is whose problem is it? So is, it, is someone doing something that you don't like but does not see it as a problem or is the problem yours or someone else's? Step three is to talk with the person and discuss what you have tried to solve the problem previously. And this can be in terms of homework, this can be in terms of maybe relationship issues. So you wanna make sure and try to figure out what has, already, what has already occurred, what have you already tried to do to solve that problem so we're not reinventing the wheel. Step four is write down a goal statement that both of you agree on. So what would be the best solution to the problem? Be specific when identifying goals. 
Don't identify what you don't want to see. Identify what you do want to see. And I think, again, this goes back to the accountability and the responsibility of that child or that student to identify goals and then work to solve those goals. Step five is to brainstorm ways to make the solution work. So whether it's your problem or someone else's problem, come up with ways to make that solution work or that goal work. Step six is make that decision. Um, pick out three of your favorite solutions and then choose the best one that fits for you and your family. So negotiate and compromise. I'm I emphasized negotiation and compromise many, many times in the previous series. Um, so I want to explain what that is and why it's important. So if problem solving doesn't work, um, then try to negotiate and compromise. And so the ways that you can do this is step one is determine if there's a difference of opinion between you and the other person. And so that opens up that communication. Why do they feel the way they feel? Why do they think the way they feel? And why do you, more importantly, why do you feel the way you feel and think the way you think? Step two is state your views and what you think the views of the other persons are. So you want to make sure you're understanding what they're saying and it's not a lapse of communication. Um, because I will say that 90% of the time when we're speaking to someone, we're, we're watching their facial expressions, their body language, and honestly, they're watching ours. And so only 10% of what we're saying actually is encompassed into us and into our brains that we understand what that other person is saying. So I think it's important to reverbalize. What are those views? What is that other person's views? Step three is to ask the person if your statement is correct. So when you, when you reverbalize and restate what they're saying, ask them, am I understanding what you're saying? Am I, am I getting it? Do, do, are there any questions? Do, do you have anything? Am I, am I saying it wrong? We want to make sure that we're understanding and there's no um, communication barrier. Step four is offer a compromise and keep negotiating until an agreeable solution is reached. And I think that's important because I keep emphasizing we want our children to be heard. And so offering that compromise gives them a sense of power and it reduces that power struggle that we often ha have um, with kids as they continue to get older. So I hope this is a little bit of more information as what I previously stated in previous, um, the previous two series. Um, so again, you are free to reach out, with, out to me with any questions or comments or concerns. I'm always here to listen um, and to help in whatever way I can. If there's any uh, confusion on this, again, please reach out to me and I'll be able to re-elaborate um, regarding the, the topics that we discussed today. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you all are staying safe and healthy and have a great day.